Hey guys, how's it going? Sean here. Today we're going to take a look at Line 6 Helix Native. Helix Native is a VST plugin that basically runs all of the software that runs on the physical Line 6 Helix units, but it can be used in your DAW on your computer. If you plug your guitar directly into your audio interface, load up an audio track in your DAW, arm it to record, insert an instance of Line 6 Helix Native, and you essentially have all of the amp effects and cabinet modeling software from the Line 6 Helix in your computer, which is pretty cool. If you're familiar with the layout and the user interface of the Line 6 Helix, and also the included HX Edit software that lets you control the hardware from your computer, you'll be right at home here because it's using the exact same user interface. So today for this video, I'm going to record a couple of guitar parts for this short little pop rock song that I put together for this demonstration. And I'm going to use Helix Native for all of the guitar parts. And afterwards, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to take the presets that we've designed or we've loaded on Helix Native on the computer and load them and transfer them over to a physical Line 6 Helix unit so that you can use the same presets from a studio setting in a live scenario. Okay, so let's take a listen to a couple of the sections of this song that I prepared. So we've got this intro section here. That builds up into like a hook section, which I've got one guitar part already recorded for. That builds into a halftime section, which I think I'm going to record a guitar solo over. And then finally that builds up into another hook at the end as well. All right, so what I'm thinking first is the transition from the hook section into the bridge could do with a cool kind of guitar transition as opposed to just the synths and the risers that I've already added. So what I'm gonna do is insert a audio track. I'm gonna call this guitar one. Select the input that my guitar is plugged into, which in this case is input one on my audio interface. Open up my browser, scroll to my favorites, drag over an instance of Helix Native. So here it is. As I said, if you're familiar with the Helix layout and the user interface of HX Edit, we've got the exact same layout here. So it's very, very intuitive. As you can see, there's a bunch of factory presets already loaded and also user folders where you can store your own presets that you've created. So I've got a couple of presets that I've already prepared. I'm going to start off with this 80s clean. <laughs> quickly going over the preset. For the amp, I'm using the US double on the normal channel. I've got a impulse response of a 1x12 cab. This one is from York Audio. For the effects in front, I'm using a red squeeze compressor, a minotaur overdrive, which isn't distorting at all. It's just acting as like a clean boost to fatten up the mid range, which is really good, especially when you're using single coils. After that, I've got a 70s chorus in mono in front of the amp. <laughs> So I'm just going to close down Helix Native and rather than add a delay or a reverb or a wet effect in Helix Native itself, I'm going to send it to a reverb that I've got set up in my session. Reason being is I have a template that I like to work to, a preset template where I can just get at all those effects really, really quickly. And also another reason is if I want to add a bunch of guitars um, that are really atmospheric, I don't want to have too many delays and reverbs like overlapping each other. So I prefer to track my guitars dry and add the effects in the DAW. So I'm going to click this plus button. I'm going to scroll down here to the space verb. And now that really dry 80s clean chorus sound we had sounds even more 80s. Sounds like this. <laughs> So really, really bright, um, splashy reverb there. But for the little transition part, I think it could sound pretty cool. So let's give ourselves two bars and let's record this part. So that's really cool, but you might've noticed that the low end 
the bottom strings of the chords kind of interfere with the bass line a little bit. You can especially hear it as the note rings out and the chord changes in the bass line. So what I'm going to do is in Helix Native, after the IR block, I'm going to come down here to EQ. I'm going to add a low and high cut. And I'm just going to cut off anything below about 200 hertz. And let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> It still clashes a little bit, but if we bring the volume down and put it in its place in the mix, it, it won't interfere too much. So as I said earlier, I chose a mono chorus for this sound. And normally when people go for these kind of 80s clean guitar tones, they might go for a stereo chorus to give it that really nice lush stereo image guitar tone. What I like to do is keep the modulation effects in front of the amp and keep the depth to a mono signal and pan that part to the left or right and double track the part if I want it to be super wide. That way, if you add a little bit of variation to the other part on the opposite side, you actually get a more wider <laughs> a more wider sound, in my opinion. Um, but also because they're two separate mono signals, they're easier to mix than one stereo guitar part that's right up the middle with the effects on each side. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take this and pan this track to the left and duplicate this track. So we've got guitar one, it'll just take a second to load over. But now we've got another track called Guitar 2, and it has carried over the Helix Native preset that we had, which is really, really handy. So I'm going to pan this one to the right. I'm going to record a double of that part we just did. So instead of position two, I'm going to switch to position four on the guitar, and I'm going to play a slight variation of the voicing of that chord. So let's arm it and record this part. All right, I'm quite happy with that, but I'm just going to bring them down a little bit in volume so that they're not too present. These are really just more of a transitional atmospheric part, so I don't want them to be too upfront in the mix. All right, so keeping with these 80s style clean tones, add another track. I'm going to call it Guitar 1 80s. And again, an instance of Helix Native. And this time I'm going to use the 80s clean preset again, but without that low cut that I added for the last two parts. And what I'm thinking is when the hook comes back in here, I'm going to record, you know, a generic, uh, just a simple rhythm, rhythm part. Because I want this to be quite atmospheric, I'm just going to send it to that same space reverb. So we've got a nice kind of shimmery, shimmery reverb. So here we go. I think it could be cool to, like I did with those transition parts, pan this to the left and add a double track. So I'm just going to duplicate the track, pan this one to the left and this one to the right again. But this time I want the other part to sound a little bit different. So what I want to do is add some polyphonic pitch shifting to the doubled part, also while playing it up an octave. So we get this nice shimmery effect. But what you'll notice here is if I go to input a pitch block, the poly effects are actually grayed out and we can't Put them in. And this is because in this instance of Helix Native, we've basically used up all of the DSP processing power for this particular preset. And the reason is these effects take up quite a lot of DSP power on the Helix units. Because Helix Native is designed for complete cross compatibility, can't say that. Cross compatibility. Between the presets in the software here and the presets on the hardware, even though we might have the processing power on our computer, we can't add any extra effects that wouldn't be possible to run on the physical 96 Helix hardware. But there are workarounds for this. So what I'm going to do, rather than having to adjust my preset here and compromise the sound just to add a pitch effect, we can simply just add another instance of Line 6 Helix Native. Open up a blank preset, select my pitch effects. I'm going to go to poly pitch, push this to plus 12. So up, uh, up an octave and we get this. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to bring the mix down a little bit. If I want that before the amp, I simply just have to put it into the slot before that insert effect. And now, really, really quickly, I've got a dedicated instance of Line 6 Helix Native just for that effect, and then that runs into the preset effect. All 
Right, so let's track this other part. Now, I noticed that I rushed the timing of that first take we did. Because we're working in a DAW, I can just simply arm that track to record again. The preset is already saved on the track. And I'm just gonna record another take. Okay, so the balance of the guitars and the synths and everything uh, might be a little bit off at the moment, but as I said, I'm just recording the guitars and producing the track. I'm not too worried about the mix just yet. I think I'm going to record one more rhythm guitar part that'll just fill out a bit more of the low mids. A lot of these parts that I've been recording so far have been quite sparkly and jangly with that 80s clean tone. So here's another audio track. Drag over Helix Native again. I've got a preset prepared that I think could be pretty cool for the part that I have in mind, but before I play it as it is, I'm just going to turn turn off these effects and show you what the preset sounds like on its own. This tone would be quite good for just like a simple distorted rhythm guitar tone, but for the track I kind of want a guitar part that fills out the low mids but doesn't sound just like a, you know, a generic distorted guitar amp. So first off, I'm going to add this arbitrator fuzz. Now you can hear quite a lot of noise added here. So I'm just going to click on this hard gate. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like. It's getting that kind of spitty, cool thing going on, especially with the gate, you're getting a pretty cool. Pretty cool guitar tone. But I'm going to take that a little bit further, a simple pitch effect set to an octave down and blend it in a little bit to give it a lower octave. And now we've got this. You can't play chords with this. That's what the poly pitch effects are for. But for this kind of single note, heavy rhythm tone, I think it could be pretty cool. Now, one last thing is I'm going to add a compressor in front of everything. Normally when you're dealing with this much gain, you don't need a compressor because it's already too compressed basically. But what a compressor could be really handy for in this case, a compressor will just even out my pick attack. It'll just make sure everything will sound as consistent as possible. So... So this guitar part almost sounds like a synth part to me at this stage, but it's doing a, it's doing its part, you know, it's filling the low mids, which is what I wanted to do, but it's doing it in a unique way where the guitar tone is a little bit more interesting. So let's pan this to the left and let's record this part. I've just duplicated the track and I'm going to record a double track of the same part just to give it some width and yeah, here we go. So for the last part, I think I'm going to record a guitar solo in the bridge section. For this preset, what I decided to go for was a stereo dual amp setup, which is actually really easy to do in the Helix and Helix Native. So if you take a look at this first path here, this first path runs along here. On the first one, we've got a matchstick amp set to channel two. That's running into an impulse response of a 4 by 12 Marshall with some greenbacks. And you'll notice that it splits off here into another parallel path. And this path, I've got a A30 fawn amp on the normal channel, another impulse response, and then the signal comes back around and rejoins the first path here. And what I've done here in the mixer is I've panned the first one to the left and I've panned the other path to the right. In front of both of the amps, I've got a pocket fuzz and a minotaur overdrive pedal. From here, I've got the path set to 2A, so the signal carries on down to this other processing path. The first path runs through this vintage digital delay set to a quarter note. One thing I haven't touched on just yet is the fact that Helix Native is running inside in a DAW where there's a tempo clock. If you select this to quarter note or eighth note, it syncs it to the clock of 
your session, which is really handy for time-based effects if you want them to be really tight and in time with the rest of your production. And on the next path after it splits over here, I've got a stereo glitz delay. I've got this set up to be just a really atmospheric ambient uh, reverb. After that, I've got a duct delay with 0% feedback and set to a quarter note. Placed afterwards just kind of has this cool ducking effect, which means you can dial in quite a lot of delay and reverb, but not have it get in the way of your guitar signal. So from here the parallel paths join back up again and I have it run through a stereo effect. This is called the double take. This just adds the tiniest little bit of stereo width to the signal so that it stands out. And speaking of standing out, these other two effects is just a compressor to smoothen everything out and this EQ boosting a little bit of 750 hertz and 6.6k. And that's basically just boosting the lead signal to kind of sit in the mix but also just poke out a little bit so that it can be heard. All right so I'm just going to set a loop point and I'm going to record a couple of takes of a few guitar solos. Alright, so that's it for the production side of things. Uh, it's just a simple song, but I'm quite happy with how everything turned out. But lastly, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to take and transfer these presets that we've designed and created in Helix Native and transfer them over to a physical 96 Helix unit so that you can use the same studio tones in a live scenario. Okay, so we're going to select the presets that we want to transfer over. So I'm going to start off with this 80s clean tone, open up the instance of Helix Native, and I'm simply going to right click and export. On my PC I've got a dedicated hard drive with all of my sample libraries, my impulse responses and my presets. So I've got a folder already set up called Helix Native. Save this preset here. Now you can save these presets anywhere you like. I just have that dedicated folder and that hard drive just for my workflow. But I definitely recommend you create a folder where you want to save all your presets so that you know where they are and you can access them at any time. So just to my right hand side here, I've got a Line 6 Helix rack unit. I've got it connected via USB just for HX edit control and for preset transfer and stuff. But I've got the audio outputs also plugged into my audio interface. Now I've just set up an audio track in the session in the DA W, and that's just so we can hear the Helix units audio output. So I'm going to bring up HX Edit now, double click to open up a new blank preset, right click and hit import. Now I'm going to locate the folder where we exported the Helix native preset and select it here. So navigate to where we installed it, Line 6 Helix, Helix native, and there it is, the 80s clean preset. Select that, hit open, and now we'll just take a second to transfer. We've got our preset installed on our Helix hardware. <laughs> So it really is that simple. I'll show you one more. I'm gonna go to that guitar solo, right click, export. The correct folder is already open because we've just exported a preset. Save, open up Helix Native again, click on a blank preset, import, and select our native lead. Once it's installed, we've got our lead tone. <laughs> So there you have it, transferring the presets from Helix Native over to the Helix hardware really is as simple as that. I think this is really, really powerful, especially when you're working on like pop productions or pop gigs where you might need to recall a lot of the sounds in case you need to do some revisions of the guitar work or something like that. But most importantly, being able to take the production guitar tones that you've used in the studio to a live scenario on your Helix hardware, I think that's really, really where the, the power of Helix Native lies. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video on Line 6 Helix Native. I want to say a huge thank you as well to Line 6 for sending over and providing this Helix rack. If you're watching this video at the time of upload, Line 6 are giving away a license of Native for free with any Line 6 Helix hardware purchase up until the end of January 2021. And if you're interested in checking that out, I've got the Line 6 website linked in the description below. So be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think about Helix Native and the Helix in the comments. If you want to see some more content from me, please consider subscribing as well and be sure to hit that little bell icon so that you can be notified of when I put out some new videos. You can find me on Instagram at Sean Murray Guitar, where I'll be posting, you know, just little snippets of the larger videos that I'm working on for YouTube and just general music bits. But yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.